Yeah. Okay, Ginika. Uh, how's how's Adelaide training? It's okay. It's good. It's good. I I like the exposure Australia gives me. So um, and thank God I can complain. So uh, I hope you don't mind. Just give me a background of where you're from, what you've up, um, what you've done. Oh, why did you come to Australia, and then the journey, how you got into the program, training program. Oh, okay. So um, I'm an IMG radiologist. Had the previous experience as a radiologist in Nigeria, then migrated here to Australia. And to practice as a recognized radiologist here in Australia, you need to undergo um, some upscaling, depending on which path we use. Um, either you go through the um, area of need or you go through the specialist, depending on which path we do, you need to undergo some radiology experience, then write up at two Franskar exams before you're recognized as a radiologist to practice here in Australia. So, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm undergoing um, the training, upskilling training prior to my writing the part two exams before I can practice as a radiologist here in Australia. And then we connected with maybe more than two years ago, right? Yeah. I During the pandemic. God. And yeah, you asked the question, uh, how, uh, how are you going to get work? Or how can you get to be um, recognized uh, or get the interview via RANZA? So you did your RANZA specialist pathway application, right? Okay, yes. Um, so um, if you go, because the college keeps updating the um, website. So anybody who needs to practice here as a radiologist, as an IMG, needs to be familiar with the uh, college website here. So I would advise anybody to keep looking at the website because it's currently, it's always been updated. So, but then of course, um, I had to follow the rules on the website. You had to have had, um, you had to be a consultant in your country, I think for one or two years then you have to write the English exam, the IELTS or the, um, what's the other one? Um, then you also need to have um, some, I think, CPDs and um, just follow the, the instructions are clearly listed on the website. And then yeah, we to connected have... to, sorry to interrupt, and you asked me questions about your um, logbook, right? And what do you need to submit the cases, right? That's very yes, important. Yeah. Yes, those are part of what um, the college needs, those CPDs. So it's listed on the website. But of course, it's always been updated. So you just yeah. need to check. So, uh, and also after your English exam, also you applied for your EPIC verification, right? Um, I think then, so because EPIC ver verification takes time, I think you can do the two at once so that... Yeah, while well, you're waiting for en English exam, right? Yeah, so okay. whilst you, you're applying for the college you, or before you even submitted all your application, you have everything, your EPIC, your IELTS, your police clearance, your logbook or your number of cases, CPDs, and all what is in what are in the list of the what's in the college uh, requirements. And then when you yeah. submitted it, um, I think two years ago, um <laughs> you uh wow, when so... you submit would you re remember how long they process your paper your 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 application did it take six months 12 months or more i, I think it's been a while though, but I, I think it's up to six months and it's i think it's clearly written on the college website okay so yeah so um i think during covid there was a lot of backlog so it may have contributed to a lot of wait times but i think now the college is speeding up because i, I think i was chatting with that's someone good to know people. that's good yeah. to know so, so when you I chatted with someone how long what was the processing Maybe was it six or so? But I, from from what I hear now, I think it's it's now um becoming faster. Like um, so, less than so six months. Maybe yeah, yeah. Around and that's good to six. know. That's very good to know. And then when yeah. you got an email or uh, the in, in um uh, email reply from the college, you got the 
assessment um, or oh, the email that you are scheduled for an interview. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they send it to you and they keep in um, correspondence with you. So they let you know. But if after a while you feel the college hasn't responded to you, send them an email, they'll respond. Yeah. So the, from the time you submitted your application to the college to so the, the correspondence that they want to interview you do you remember was it three months or six months it should be up to six months yeah, okay quite some so time. after that when did you when was the scheduled interview from then on the the correspondence about the interview was it two three months or so or straight away i can't remember <laughs> but it wasn't too long i don't think it was up to three months no Okay. I don't think it was up to. Three I don't months. think it's up, no, up to three months. I think less than three months, right? Yeah. And then, and then you got the. Uh, whilst you're waiting for everything, and it feels like for you, you've been telling me it feels like forever, right? What have you been doing? I know you've done non-medical jobs, right? Just yeah, to have so that, that, something. Um, yeah. Yes, yes. So it, it was an experience for me. Okay, number one, it was during COVID. So basically, it couldn't work. So one of yes. the things I did then was I also did um, a diploma of community services online. Wow. That's the course I did online, yeah. So um, it's, it's with that, I was able to work in childcare, which I love doing. So I worked in daycare centers. I wow. worked as um, an assistant um an assistant in child care so working with daycare and um also there are other good jobs one can do um i also did um disability it's it's uh i, I was That's a disability in care work. yeah disability care work, which i love yeah and it's because it's uh, i did community services which is all encompassing there's an aspect of early child care and there's an ex aspect of um, disability so it really helped me and um is this safe? Yeah, yeah. Is this safe? Oh yes, it's safe. You know, um, yeah, um, it's safe. It, it, uh, yeah, it's safe. And um, you know, then during the and I think it's still on in uh, in Victoria. I think in Australia, why? But yeah, I know TAFE Victoria, is also around. Yeah, there's TAFE in yeah, here so. and TAFE Australia. Um, even if you're a migrant, um, doctor or a migrant or um not for uh, not a uh, pr or citizen you can still do tafe right yeah but that's that's the challenge so because um i'm a pr i know i was able to assist yes it understand you. yeah yeah, yeah that's but it's still all costly if you're going to apply to study as in any immigrant uh um oh. person uh mm -hmm. it will be costly to study in australia anyway so but it's still achievable doable of course and it keeps you sane right especially during the pandemic <laughs> yeah it was it, it was a it was it was good i i can't okay. complain <laughs> i don't have any regrets so I tell me complain. about your um your college interview how was it good so um like i said you need to have had it depends on which pathway the immigrants. It will be spe specialist. We're talking about specialists. What you did, so you they assess your qualifications. You had the interview, and at the result of the it, it was this a face to face interview or a online as interview? Then, as at then, it was online during ah. COVID. There was yeah, so it was so the interview was a panel of two, three, four doctors. Three, then yeah. the... and then and the result of your um tell me if it's correct the result of your assessment after the interview that you're comparable yeah so that's basically all basically what it is as at then i don't that's think, amazing like, I always say you, you um you have to keep checking the college website but what the specialist assessment is to compare your knowledge with that of an Australian trained radiologist. So basically you're going to start, they're, they're going to ask you, um, they asked me what, I'm, what I am, I should just give a brief description of myself right from basically medical school, my internship, 
my residency program and um, my life as a radiologist. So I was able to explain to the examiners how many years, you know, the six years of medical training, that's how, what you do each year, then your internship, how each of the internship went, each of the sessions of the internship, after internship, did I have to do a private practice? Because where I'm from, I um, we have we do, we do something we call a national youth service program, whereby we serve our country. It's like a voluntary service. So I explained to them what, what I did then, where I worked in the hospitals. Then from there, through the radiology training, what you do in the first year of radiology, where you're learning the physics, applied basic, basic training, and um, anatomy and co. When you write a second MB, third MB, you you describe our well, clinical radiology, your dissertation. I explained to them what my dissertation was, what my I, because I published my studies online, so it's it's online. If you Google it, you so I explain to them the results and everything. Then um, applying for my part two exam, after, after you do your part one, you become a senior registrar and everything. You hold your MDTs. Your after your part two exams, what next one I go to them? That is what they're interested in, and whatever they didn't understand, they ask questions where I clarify them. Um, that's for the specialist I did then. I do not know if it has changed now. So, how long have you been a consultant radiologist in your country? Mm, I think um, was it two years? Yeah, because as of then, I think for you to apply to even be a um to come to australia to practice as a radio you need to under the specialist but i think you need to have is it one or two years of consultancy as a then so i think two yeah okay yeah. that would make sense then because uh when i applied for the college assessment um they told me i'm not comparable because i did not do a uh, consultant maybe i did only less than one year of um a consultant job in the philippines mm. and i did one year of um fellowship training intervention so that's that would make sense now why they asked me to do a additional 18 months of training because i did not really practice full-time two years consultant job that makes sense now <laughs> Okay, so you've got, uh, they said you're comparable and then you just need to see the exam, but you don't want to see the exam yet. You don't feel you're ready. Is that correct? Yeah, so uh, when they say you're comparable, it depends on how many uh, months of upskilling they give you. They give you from either six months, um, 12 months, upskilling, 18 months. I think the maximum is 24 months. So it so depends on. The what did they say to you? Do you need to upskill? Yeah, they gave me six months, but oh, let's good. just say, yeah, the exams are very tough. I like with yeah. especially everything, even pathology, pathology, like yeah. where I'm from, you don't have to, when you write pathology, you don't need to write pathology, but here I have to read pathology. Yeah, yeah. I have to yeah. Read oh don't worry, God. I'll help you. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, of course it's easy. I know I will pass the exam. Um, no doubt, no doubt. I don't have, I'm not doubting. I will pass the exam. I had to clear that thought from my mind. So Correct. I will write the exam and I will pass it and I will practice as a radiologist. Statement. Correct. Now tell me how was uh when the time when you were looking for a six months training position, right? Uh, how long what did, did it take you to look for a job, right? That was another challenge or hurdle. Yeah, so, so I think that's 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 a very, I mean that's that's a hurdle. It's you know it's like having blind faith. Like you 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 go for an exam, you do not know if you get a job. That's one of the reasons that actually discourages people from going through the specialist pathway. Not because they are not qualified, because how can you go for an assessment and it's clearly stated on the college website, the college does not assist in giving jobs. You no, know, how can you go through all that stress? You pay all the money and you're not guaranteed a job. You understand? Yep. So yep. thank God. Um, thank God I was in Australia. Sorry, you're cutting I off. Submitted applications everywhere. Like, like what I said me? to you. Hello? 
Yeah, like what I said to you. Yeah, I said yes, to you, yes, apply yes. to every everything, everywhere, all over Australia, right? Even remote, and just be proactive. And it took you what six months or so to find a job. Yeah, yeah, because I applied everywhere, everywhere, and job hunting isn't easy. But um, we have. And to you're, you're feeling have... depleted at that time when you were talking to me, right? <laughs> You remember, right? You remember. Oh my Absolutely, hundred percent. But I keep telling you, just wait. It will come, and it did, right? Now you're finished yeah, your six months. Did. You're halfway. Uh, I don't know if I say I've finished. Let's just say I'm preparing for exams. <laughs> yeah, you finish, but you... but your upskilling <laughs> is finished. <sighs> I'm preparing for exams that's the best way i'll say but when you say finish you give me the impression like i've written part two and the no, five different i'm steps. talking about the next step of upskilling your finishes six months now the next step is preparing for the exam so how are you being supported in adelaide uh for your exam preparation are you proactively or being also supported or just being proactively actively asking people to help you yeah so um the, the training here so it's um like a residency training we have um tutorials every day with the consultants so um those are also helpful um yeah helpful aspect where you get to meet the consultant and of course the general um um good interaction between the consultants and the, the registrar. So they are, do it this way, you know, the guidance and the mentorship, do it this way, it's this way. In the exams, this is what they want to hear. This is how you put it, you know, those yeah. are all key, which I'm really learning, learning and learning from everywhere. And of course the availability of online courses and um, for example, Radiopedia is a good source. We have access to it and I mean, lovely like I'm just Ginica. soaking everything in and and then all helping very good now Ginica there's a breast imaging conference in Adelaide in March are you attending this wonderful I'm not aware March I'll send it to you when, when? I'll send it to wow. you wow oh my uh, god it's How very important it's breast screen um it's a breast screen conference I'll, I'll text to you now um be around i won't be able to go because it's in adelaide and my oh, right. colleague my colleague is already attending mm. so I'll, I'll just tell her to keep an eye on you and you keep an eye on her but we cannot be away together because she's my I cover <laughs> she's my cover and it, we cannot be away together yeah, that's true. <laughs> but it is go. it's very good for you to attend because it's already there you need to invest and you need to so soak everything in and also um, sign up for the breast screen reader test. There is a, a every every year when they have this conference, there is a breast screener test. They just assess uh, you, tells you what you can, uh, what cancer you can see or miss or something. It is a personal assessment. It's also CPD points for you. Oh wow, that's good. I always Thank do you. that. So apart from your CPD for to attending CPD. that, you'll probably get 25 CPD points already for that conference, I think. Because um okay. per hour per day, okay. I think it's a two or three day conference, and every day is seven to eight hours CPD, right? So you already have half of the year uh CPD. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what's your game plan now uh, with regards to sitting days and do you have a target date year when to sit the exam? I'm working towards writing the next one this year and I know with God that is going to guide me. I know it's very tough, but I believe that you I need to have it. a go because you will not know mm -hmm. how tough it will be until you have to do it. So you're mm -hmm. uh, planning to sit it this last quarter right or last uh, mm -hmm. second half mm -hmm. of the year yeah okay yeah that's very good so i'm just mm -hmm. going to 